All right. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us out on YouTube. This is uh, our webinar, our live Q&A webinar coming to you live from Van Arts. Um, so uh, we are your hosts. I'm Ken Preby. I'm the manager of communications and student services, sort of one of the people behind the scenes here at the school, uh, supporting our students and helping facilitate um, presentations and webinars of this nature, which we do all year round. And I have my wonderful co-host here with me tonight. Hello, everybody. My name's Amelia, and I'm with the admissions department here at the school. And yeah, what I do here is help you out throughout the super exciting journey of applying to our school. And I guide you every step of the way um, until you um, get admitted. So yeah, thank you so much for being here and welcome. Mm -hmm. Great. OK, so um, Amelia and I are just going to be, be your hosts here for the next little bit. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. If you are watching us right now, we, we can see that you're out there on the viewer <laughs> counter. There's a few of you out there. So please type into the chat, say hello. Let us know where you're watching from right now, uh, which country you're in. Tell us a bit if you want to tell us a bit about yourself. If you're a high school student, if you're a college student, if you're maybe looking for a career change, um, you know, Tell us, tell us all about you. This is all going to be pretty, pretty casual. We're basically here to answer any questions that you guys have. So, if we have, as with a, a live Q and A, you know, there, there, there's no A if the, if we have no Q. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> don't be shy. We're here to basically just kind of hang out and answer any questions that you have. Um, while you're doing that. Um, just to give you an idea of Van Arts and who we are. Uh, we've, we're a media arts college in Vancouver, Canada. We've been around for 26 years. Um, we have thousands of graduates working in the industry all over the world. We're very highly ranked uh, by the industries that we trained for. Um, just recently, we became a Rookies certified school. Um, if you're familiar with the Rookies website, they're basically a, a resource for the digital entertainment industry um, uh, based out of Australia. And uh, we're really glad to be a part of them now as well. And these are the programs that we offer. So we have programs for 2D and 3D character animation, game art and design, and visual effects. Those are all kind of similar, but they're also very different uh, in focus. Uh, professional photography, web development, digital design, and we have an acting for film and television program. So um, each one of these programs is basically a full-time program for one year. And when we say one year, we literally mean 12 months uh, straight through. We have start dates in March and September every year. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, this is really what, what we're all about. So as you're introducing yourself, let us know which of these programs you're primarily interested in. I see some of you guys have done that already. Let's see who we have. So. Watching from New West in the theater industry for about eight mm -hmm. years looking for a career change. Good, you're in the right place. Alex with a Pink Floyd um, profile picture, which makes me very excited. <laughs> <laughs> you have good taste in music. High school student from Calgary who listens to Pink Floyd. Cool. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Web design and video games. Okay, a lot of high school students here. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, People watching from Nigeria. Hello, welcome. What time is it there? It must be early in the morning. And then from North Van at oh DMA Digital Media Academy. Yay. Yeah, we're very close with DMA. We are. Yeah. We love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, folks. Cool, cool, cool. So start asking us questions. Mm -hmm. Let us know if there's anything, anything that you that you want to know. Seems like there's a lot of um, interest in animation. Uh huh. Yeah. So, do yeah. You let us maybe start us off by sure. telling us a bit about the program. And then... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, as Ken was saying, these are full-time programs. They are intensive training programs, and they are twelve months long. And um, the main goal of these programs is to train you for the industry, so to make you job ready. We call all of these programs job ready programs because we teach you as if you were already working at a studio. So the dynamic mm -hmm. is very similar to that of a studio, so that when you do graduate, um, you can transition very easily into the industry and work at a studio. Uh, 
uh, without any further training. So um, that's what we're all about. Um, the 2D and the 3D character animation programs are actually two separate programs. They follow almost the exact same curriculum with the main difference being that the 3D character animation program is taught with Maya and the, the 2D character animation program is taught with Toon Boom's Harmony. Uh, but other than that, they follow the same curriculum. Um, the other main difference between these two programs is that for the 3D character animation program, you're mostly going to be given assets to animate, whereas in the uh, 2D program, you're going to be drawing and animating your own characters. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to be drawing in the 3D program in 3D there's also a lot of drawings so a lot of people think that um, they need to choose 2D because they're going to be drawing more but that is not the case you're going to be drawing for both um, there's going to be more jobs in the TV industry for uh, 2D character animation and more in film for 3D character animation but there's definitely both in both it's just there's more of each for each one of them um, and the cool thing about these programs is that you can also uh, branch out to advertisement and we will give you all the tools and skills for you to be able to do so. So yeah, okay. that's just some, yeah, a brief, um, just, you know, just like a brief um, explanation of the differences between the programs. Yeah, You're very cool. Okay, so good. We have some questions rolling in. So that's what we like to see. So can you apply to a program if you are still in high school? Yes, Brianna, you can totally do yeah. that. Um, if you do get admitted before graduating high school, you will be given a conditional letter of acceptance. And also your uh, parent or legal guardian will have to sign your student contract for you. But you can still be admitted and we would have to wait for you to graduate high school in order to join the program or be over 19 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some 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 students do apply during their grade 11 year or their grade mm -hmm. 12 year and, you know, like accept you conditionally in lieu of you getting your your final transcript. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. we will require your final transcript to give you a final letter of acceptance or for you to mm -hmm. turn 19. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. All right. Important due dates for the animation program and the portfolio. All right, so uh, we work on a rolling enrollment system, which means that once we reach the expected number of students, which is 20 to 22 per intake, we create a wait list. So what we advise is that you apply at least six months in advance. Um, if you are lucky and there are still seats available after that, then that's great. But otherwise, we do encourage everyone to apply as soon as they know they want to apply for our programs because seats do fill in quickly. And also because you might have to plan financially, apply for student loans, maybe even move um, um, from a different country to Canada, uh, find a place to live, get familiar with the city. So all that takes away more time that you think, apply for a study permit. So six months or more, even six to eight months is ideal to apply for these programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I like this question. Just because I'm completely mm -hmm. oblivious to what the post-secondary experience is like, what would student life be like? Cool, cool. Mm. Yeah. I would say it's at fun. our school, very busy, but very fun. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you're, yeah, it can be a lot of fun, but it is going to be a lot of work. As we said before, this is an intensive training program. So classes run from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. for most of the programs, um, Monday to Friday for 12 months. So that means that uh, there's not a lot of time, like long breaks, like in a regular university where you get three months of a break for summer or a month break in winter, etc. That's not the case here, but there's only still some room for you to have fun as well. And you're going to have... Um, students coming in from all around the world as well, which is also really fun. Mm -hmm. Depending on where students are from, you can learn so much from them and their art. And their art is definitely going to be different depending on where they're from. So there's a lot you can um, experience with them. It's a very rewarding experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it is, it is, as Amelia said, very intensive. We, mm -hmm. Because our programs are only 12 months, we pack in like what you would normally learn in like a, a three or four year uh, mm -hmm. Two, two to two to four year college or university program and we're smashing it all into one 12 month so it's kind of like a, a one year job interview really because um, it is like being we're, we're training you to work in a studio or training or maybe in some programs mm -hmm. uh, in some programs maybe even training you to you know to run your own run your own business particularly in photography, yeah, photography. and web, web mm -hmm. design we do that a bit as well so you know it's uh, it's a lot of hard work. But it's a lot of fun. We're located mm -hmm. uh, 
just east of downtown Vancouver, uh, just a block away from Science World. So we're down on Terminal Avenue. Uh, we have a new, brand new state-of-the-art campus space, which we're currently uh, in the middle of getting finalized. And we'll be moving up there pretty quickly. And um, so, yeah, you know, it's a good environment, really close to transit. Mm -hmm. um, the students do hang out after, outside of class. They go to movies together. They go for drinks together. They become mm -hmm. like a little family unit in each program. And, and uh, in, our, in our new campus space, all departments are on the same floor. So uh, that's going to be really good for, you know, fostering the community and mm -hmm. collaboration between different departments as well. So, so it's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. All right. So is math necessary for the game art program? That's a good question. It is not necessary. So right. um, we will talk about the admissions requirements, but uh, just briefly, uh, we, we will need to see your transcript. We do encourage everybody to submit their um, recent transcripts, and especially if you are under 19, they are mandatory. Um, however, we do not look so much into your grades or the classes that mm. you've taken. Math is not necessary for any of our programs. Um, and what we suggest is that you do take as many art classes as you can during high school so that you stay creative and, you know, de develop your skills, especially if you have any animation or Maya classes or photography, you're into photography, etc. Uh, but yeah, no, the short answer is you do not need math or any requirements. Uh, we are going to uh, we are going to require a portfolio from you um, and that will be basically it no not really your math scores or science or anything like that what we care about the most is your passion and your commitment to the program and your mm -hmm. willingness to learn yeah good all right related to game art once again what level of experience would i need if i were to apply for game art and design so we do not expect you to be at professional level at all. Uh, we do need for you to be able to make art using a computer. We want to see a lot of digital art uh, in your portfolio uh, when you submit a portfolio to for admission into the program. Um, but we do not expect it to be at professional level. We do want to see some 3D models as well. And we want to see graphic design, illustration, anything you can make with a computer. Um, but yeah, the level should be should be enough for us to know that you can make art with a computer. Yeah, I can bring up some examples if you want. Mm -hmm. Sure, that'd be great, um, thanks. These are a few portfolio examples for- Those are for animation. Like animation, yeah. 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 Um, let's see. This animation, game mm -hmm. art and design, like every program, depending on which program you guys are applying for, your portfolio might look a little bit different. Animation has very specific guidelines for the things they want to see. And they want to see like uh, location sketches and sketches of characters in motion primarily. Um, here's some examples of like a 3D model and some cartoon drawings. Um, you know, and if you're comfortable with traditional media, if you're comfortable with digital media, like drawing with a stylus or drawing mm -hmm. in a sketchbook or using Procreate or Blender or Maya or any kind of 3D, I think for 3D animation and game art, it's, it's really helpful to have some 3D knowledge coming in, uh, but also being able to draw in perspective, mm -hmm. um, light and shadow. These are some digital art examples mm -hmm. that people have had in their portfolios. So, um, but some of this, again, is pencil sketching, doodling. Here's some basic models and digital paintings that people have submitted. And this could be a, applicable to um, visual effects as well. Yes. So a visual effects court portfolio could be traditional art. It could be fine art. It could be digital art. It could also be film and video projects. Uh -huh. uh, but visual effects is a bit more technical. I'd say for game art and animation, you definitely want to have some... Uh, some of this, some of this kind of skill, these, these yeah. fine art skills coming mm -hmm. in. So those are some examples of things we like to see. Yes. All right. So let's see, are there alumni from Van Arts who have made their own cartoons or movies? Yeah, we actually do. Um, I mean, most of our students who come to Van Arts, they come to Van Arts because they want to work in a studio. Uh, that's what we're all about is basically making you job ready for uh, working in a studio environment. When you're working in a studio, you're not working on your own 
film unless mm -hmm. you get to the you know after many years of working in the industry i've been involved in the animation field myself for a long time so i know how the industry works and i've done some freelance work um but even as a freelance animator you know the the animation that i've even done uh, it's not based on my own design or my own story. It's basically the director saying, this is the story, this is the character. You have to animate this character doing this action. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how it is when you're working in a studio, whether you're freelancing or whether you actually have a physical workplace, a studio that you go to work to every day. Um, you know, all the TV series and movies that you guys watch on, on Netflix and on television and in the movie theaters, you know, those are all done by hundreds of people working together as a team. So that's what we're really training students to do. That being said, some animators do might make their own films on the side. They might decide to make their own animated short. Um, <laughs> you get to make your own animated short here while you're in the program, and then mm -hmm. that goes towards your demo reel. Um, but the short answer is, yeah. I mean, if you want to make your own film, um, you're certainly welcome to do that. But uh, mm -hmm. but there's also those studio jobs that you can get hired to work on on other people's stories as well. Yeah, and a lot of our students have actually opened up their own studios as well. Some of them uh, have, yeah. Yeah, some of our international students have gone back to their home countries and opened up studios there and even hired Van Arts grads eventually. Yeah. Um, and we even had a group of students uh, when the pandemic first started and they oh, started yeah. their own studio and the name of the studio is Pandemic Studios, which I think is really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they took matters into their own hands, right? Because uh -huh. you know, yeah. the industry was in kind of a weird state at that point. Uh -huh. but, but the industry is hopping now. Now. it's insane how much hiring is going on so uh, mm -hmm. but you know that that shouldn't stop you from if you have enough energy at the end of the day to make your own stuff you should always do, Go your, for own, it. do yeah. your own personal work on the side as well that's always a great thing to do mm -hmm. um when do the programs start so specifically photography so that would be march mm -hmm. and september every year yeah uh, and that so. goes for all programs except acting. Acting right. only takes students once a year, and we only take 16 to 20 students on mm -hmm. like, every September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our next start date is just a couple weeks away, uh, but we are still accepting last minute applications for March of 2022. Mm -hmm. And then of course, September 2022 and, and beyond that as well. Uh, is it okay to be from a different community? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. We have mm -hmm. students of all walks of life, all different orientations, backgrounds, different countries. Mm -hmm. different it's so diverse. I love I yeah. love our school for that. It's so diverse. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's the important thing is just your applic the application, uh, the application um, materials that we request from you uh, as a, in our admissions requirements. That's the only thing that uh, that really is the, the key thing for getting you into the school That's exactly important. yes and your commitment your passion is what will take you further yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. all right so let's see are there any writing classes in the animation program that's a good question. Yeah, it's a really great question, but we we do not teach you um, script writing or mm -hmm. anything like that in the program. It is going to be very focused on characters. You're going to be an expert in character animation. If you want to be a yeah. character animator, this is the program for you. But no, you will not be writing. Yeah, yeah. Writing for animation is usually a process that is kind of like Oftentimes they will work from a written script. There might be a written mm -hmm. script that that the animation production team starts from, but they also do what's called storyboarding. And mm -hmm. so they actually that the whole process of writing for animation is a little bit different than say writing a novel or writing mm -hmm. a live action film, which which goes from a written screenplay, which is what our actors focus on. Uh, there's actually storyboard artists and story artists, and they actually write the story while doing drawings which are kind mm -hmm. of like a like a comic strip version of the of the film before they go into animation and mm -hmm. uh we do have a course within the animation program there is a course called story and visual language which will give you the skills that you need in order to write a good story uh position the camera in different you know you learn about camera angles and mm -hmm. and cutting and editing and all that kind of stuff we do we will teach that um, and that's kind of how the the writing process of animation is a little bit more of a visual process. Um, but we will teach some of that those skills for you as well. Um, but you you will focus on animation most of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, will you continue to have any classes available online? Well, um, most of our programs are offered in person and as the pandemic's starting to slow down now in person instruction is is basically what we're moving towards you know back back to kind of being normal that being said there's three different programs that can be taken 100% online and those are visual effects game art and design and the web development and digital design mm -hmm. program um, those are the only three programs that have a 100% online option, mm -hmm. which means if, if, if you're interested in any of those three programs, the short answer is that, yes, you can take it online. You would basically be part of the same class of the students who are here in person in the classroom taking it. It's just that you're going to be, you know, a, a window on a Zoom screen along with mm -hmm. everyone else while they're in class. But we'll still treat you as, as the same, mm -hmm. you know, within the same class. The advantage is that if you're if you're from outside of Vancouver in particular, you don't have to uh, spend the money to move here. You can take it from wherever you are. But classes will be offered in the Pacific Vancouver time zone. So depending on where you are, you have to kind of adjust your clock mm -hmm. for 12 months. But as long as you're OK with that, um, these three programs can be taken online. Um, the other ones are only offered as a physical in-person classroom environment. Yes, and also um, you are able to take a part of it online and then part of it in person as well. It's really completely mm -hmm. up to you on how you want to take it. You can also take it fully in person. So yeah, yeah. it's up to you to decide for yeah. those three specific programs. That's right, yeah. All right, these are good questions, folks. This is good, I'd like to see. All right, here's Coda Bleep again. In the animation program, is there any business courses? So there is not a business per se uh, course. However, uh, what we do is help you build your demo reel for you to be able yeah. to present it to a studio after you graduate. So you're going to graduate with a portfolio, industry contacts, and also a demo reel that you will be working a lot on during last term. Um, and in this industry, what studios care about the most is really that your demo reel. They want to see what you can do, what you can deliver. And um, our job here at the school is to help you put together a really great demo reel. Obviously, it's also up to you to work really hard throughout the year so that you can put together a good demo reel but we do mm -hmm. focus on that a lot so it's not a business um situation but we do give you some skills on how to present yourself to yep. the to the industry oh yeah totally mm -hmm. how to market yourself as an animator mm -hmm. yeah we have some pathways we have a, pa a few different pathways with uh, partner colleges and universities that you can do further studies after Van Arts. Mm -hmm. And one of them, one of the schools, two of the schools that we partner with, um, Fairleigh Dickinson and BCIT, they have business courses um, that you can opt to do after Van Arts mm -hmm. as kind of like a pathway. They'll actually accept transfer credit from your Van Arts diploma into their their program towards either a, a degree or an advanced diploma in business management. Mm -hmm. So if that is something that if you're asking that because you might want to maybe start do a tech startup or do your own anime start your own animation studio or if you want to learn a little bit of business skills in addition to animation uh, and if that's your goal there's ways that you can do that through mm -hmm. the pathway um, after van arts you can you can go to one of those colleges and do kind of like a dual credential that way so all right um here we go I think I would be doing a 3D animation or modeling. Could I get a job straight out of a 3D course? Yes. Absolutely. And that is exactly what we focus on here at the school, to train you for a job. Um, as I said before, this these are all job-ready programs, and mm -hmm. the main objective is to make you jobable. So the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. The jobs are out there. Like we said, the industry is really insane mm -hmm. right now. There's a lot of hiring going on. Uh, the jobs won't fall into your lap. You still need to apply mm -hmm. to the studio and you need to have um, what I always like to say as wearing my student services hat is that, mm -hmm. you know, your your demo reel slash mm -hmm. portfolio, which is your end goal. That's what you work on in your final term at Van Arts. Your demo reel gets you the interview and the interview gets you the job. Mm -hmm. um, we just had a virtual presentation with Framestore. Uh, which is a huge visual effects company. They have studios all over the world, and they're actually going to be opening a studio here in Montreal, which is really, or in Vancouver, sorry. Uh, they have a studio in Montreal already. Mm -hmm, yeah. And some of our students are working there already, uh, but they're mm -hmm. they're opening a studio here, which is fantastic. 
And they talked a lot about that. They talked about professionalism and how, mm -hmm. you know, they'll basically, they hire people based on how well the interview goes. Um, and you get the interview based on the your work, demo reel. your mm -hmm. demo reel and your knowledge of the software. Mm -hmm. And, but it's a lot of it, it's all the interviews and recommendations mm -hmm. and referrals from your classmates, your teachers, your peers, that the people that you meet in this industry, mm -hmm. and the, the industry is big, but it's also very small and everybody kind of knows each other and where it gets around. So as long as you work hard and have good work to show, then the, there's no reason why you can't land a job. The jobs are there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then since you mentioned 3D animation and modeling, um, 3D animation and modeling are actually two separate programs that we have mm -hmm. here in terms of focus. So if you want to be an animator, you want to be in the 3D character animation program. If you want to focus more on modeling, you're probably going to be happier in the game art and design program because they do yes. a lot more modeling in that mm -hmm. program. Uh, but um, if you talk with Amelia, she can walk you through. Yes, which, we can go over the program. differences. Yeah. If you're, if you're having a hard time deciding which program is the best fit, then that's that's what we'll that's what our admissions team is for. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, what does the web design program look like? Cool. Well, it is basically um, it's web development and digital design. Uh, we're currently looking at some ways to kind of restructure it. Um, in terms of how you can kind of focus more on design or development. Um, as of right now, it's essentially, you know, like a, like a um, basically like a, a split between coding development and mm -hmm. web design and also digital marketing. So it's about 40% design, 40% coding development and 20% digital marketing and online business. Uh, it's all taught by professional developers, professional coders, professional designers who have specialties in their own fields. Um, it's very intensive, like all of our programs are, um, and it's constantly developing, it's constantly changing because the web technology is always changing. Um, the department head, the head of our department has been talking about implementing Web3 technology into the program, which is sort of the next frontier of, uh, for web development. And so that's basically what it's all about. Um, and then we have uh, on our website, we'll have a sort of a term by term breakdown on all the different courses and the different softwares and different platforms that you would be learning. Mm -hmm. So it's for people that want to kind of get a real well-rounded look at the whole industry. Uh, because even if you're just a coder or a designer, you have to work with other people. Um, so you have to kind of understand how the whole process of web development works. All right, so uh, employment rate for students within six months? 92% yeah. of our students find jobs within six months of graduation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, and like we said, the industry is definitely in a good place mm -hmm. right now. This is a really good time to be getting training because there's a lot of demand mm -hmm. for jobs. Um, so. Yeah, with the pandemic, um, everybody needed to be entertained. We were all stuck at home. So a lot of the studios were hiring and are still hiring. And they actually call Vancouver the new Hollywood or Hollywood North. I don't know if you yeah. guys knew this. Yeah. But um, that means that a lot of the studios are here in Vancouver. There's over like 60 studios oh, in the city. Least. Yeah, like, yeah 60, 60. 60. Uh-huh. So there's definitely jobs out there. You just really need to get the proper training for it. And that's what our school would help you. This school is your gateway to the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And it, and it is like a one-year job interview, too, because mm -hmm. a lot of our instructors actually work in the industry. Yes. Yeah. So they're actually coming in outside of their regular studio jobs to teach mm -hmm. classes. Um, so you're you're learning every day from people who could potentially uh, either you know hire you to work on their team or recommend mm -hmm. you to their art director, their supervisor, or can put mm -hmm. in a good word for you. You know exactly, yeah, yeah. or be your reference, yeah, for, yeah. for a job. Yeah. So that's why it's so important, you guys, when you do join the school, your commitment is really so important. Mm -hmm. um, your hard work will really take you really far, and showing up, coming in class on time, all of these things mean a lot to the professors. They will recommend recommend you if they see you working really hard. Um, they will not stick out their necks for you if they, and recommend you if you're not doing 
um, you know, your your job as a student here at the school. So as yeah. long as you work really hard and you're committed and you're really passionate about this, uh, you will do excellent in this industry. There's a lot of opportunities, yeah. And another really important thing about these programs, you guys, is that you get so much mentorship from people in the industry. I would say that's one of the most important things here at the school. The ratio um, student um, from students and professors is amazing. Our our classrooms are really small 20 to 22 people is a very small classroom that means you get a mm. lot of time with your instructors and there's so much you can learn about professionals in the industry so um that's something to keep in mind definitely and um even though some of these programs are taught online that mentorship is still there so yeah having these professionals as your contact or just as part of your network is really important as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah totally it's awesome it's always great to see where everybody ends up. Uh -huh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So do you need to have a knowledge in coding before you can take the web design program? And if yes, what kind of portfolio is required? So short answer is you don't need any experience mm -hmm. in coding. You can come in having never coded anything, and we will teach it from scratch. And the web program is actually the only program that does not require a portfolio. Um, if you have one, that's great. You can include mm -hmm. it in your application. But um, a portfolio is not required. It's required for other programs, um, except for acting, which is an audition process. But uh, that's different. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, the short answer is no portfolio is no. required, and you don't need any experience. Um, so for international students, which we have many of them, how do Canadian visas and the process work? So that is essentially going to be, might be slightly different depending on the country that you're coming mm -hmm. from, but the Canadian embassy works pretty much the same way in every country. It's something that you have to apply in advance for a visa so that you can come to the Canadian border and then get your study permit at the border. Um, once you have, and as long as you have a letter of acceptance from our school and you have your finances all in order, those are kind of things mm -hmm. that they're going to want to see. Mm -hmm. We, we can't really, um, as Van Art staff, we cannot guide you or give you advice mm -hmm. on the process. We can direct you to the Canadian immigration website. Mm -hmm. And we also have several immigration consultants that we do work with. If students need a little extra guidance or want to hire a consultant to help them with their application, mm -hmm. Um, and we also have an admission or um, immigration consultants that will give workshops and presentations to students mm -hmm. here throughout the year as well to answer those questions about uh, study permits, work permits, all that kind of stuff. So because immigration policies change all the time, which is why we don't want to give you any misleading information. So the mm -hmm. best thing to do is just to, you know, our our website has some basic links and basic information of what you need in order to apply for a visa and a study permit. And then you should definitely consult the Immigration Canada website for all the particular details of how to go about doing that. Um, and then that's also why you want to apply, as we said before, you know, uh, sooner rather than later for a start date that you want because depending on the country and particularly with we've seen you know that with the pandemic and everything it's caused a lot of delays with study permits sometimes in some countries it's taking a lot longer for them to process so you have to keep that in mind as you're planning to do that but it's a pretty straightforward process mm -hmm. and there's even a tutorial made by the canadian government that you can follow yeah, yeah, their mm -hmm. website's pretty user friendly. You just yeah, it's over. super user friendly. Yeah. All right, folks. Let's see. Uh, accessibility initiatives for people with disabilities or for new parents. Wow, congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's any accommodations that you need uh, for any kind of thing that you need in, in regards to um, a physical disability or a learning disability or anything like that best thing to do is just to talk to us while you're in the middle of your application process. Um, mm -hmm. Let us know up front if there's any accommodations that you would need in order to mm -hmm. succeed in the program. And then we'll sort of take it on a case by case basis and make mm -hmm. sure that it's something that we can provide for you. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, absolutely. Just let us just talk to us. We'll, we'll work, we'll work with uh, wherever you're at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, area around Van Arts. Well, we are, I don't know if you're familiar with Vancouver, but we are um, really close to the SkyTrain. Actually, we have a map 
let me bring up, let me bring this slide back on. All right, I'll show you where we are actually. So this slide here is sort mm -hmm. of a beautiful overhead shot of our lovely city. Um, so the big sort of body of water in the middle is basically False Creek. Mm -hmm. The giant dome is Science World. Um, that little button, the sort of little uh, speech bubble down in the bottom right uh, that says Van Arts, that's where our campus is. So like I said, we are just east of the downtown core. Um, that's the SkyTrain just to the left of the button there. We're, so th we're basically right along the SkyTrain, mm -hmm. uh, the expo line. Yeah, the Main Street Science World. Yeah, yeah. Get off of Main Street Science World, walk a couple blocks, and you're basically there. Um, mm -hmm. It's a safe area. It's it's a good area. There's a lot of studios in the nearby area, too. We actually yeah. have a visual effects company in the same building. And we have video game studios, um, Activision, and Ayugo Mobile. Um, are right next door. Um, e Electronic Arts is expanding their studio into the old MEC building, which was just a few blocks away. So the neighborhood that we're in is kind of like Studio Central. There's a lot of uh, video game animation and effects companies that are within the sort of neighborhood that we're, mm -hmm. that we're, that we're in. So uh, so yeah, that's kind of where, where we're at. There's a park nearby. There's a few scenic areas nearby. Downtown is just a short train right away, so you can get close to the beach and mm -hmm. Stanley Park and all Granville Island. It's so beautiful. It is. There's so much you can do here. You can um, ski, snowboard, and go to the beach on the same day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's pretty easy to walk or bike everywhere yeah. too. And then the yeah, summer is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You don't really even need a car in the city. There's really no. good transit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely good. Cool, cool. All right, moving right along. Uh, do I need to show some 2D animations I made for portfolio if I wanted to go in the 2D program? So um, you can add them if you have them. It's great. We do want to see them. Definitely add them. Um, but definitely follow the submission guidelines for the portfolio, which is 12 pieces of your best artwork. Uh, and half of that needs to be characters and dynamic poses. And the other half needs to be live drawing. It can be um, location sketches, geometric shapes, or anything that shows your understanding of perspective. So um, as long as you follow that, including your animation is a great thing to do but please don't just send two pieces of animation and nothing else we really want to see your drawings as well mm -hmm. yeah awesome all right hello hello what does admission look like if i have not yet completed my english 12 uh completing it this semester yeah, so as we mentioned before, if you have not graduated from high school yet, that's completely okay. You can apply. A lot of people apply in grade 11 or 12 um, before graduating. And the only difference will be that you will get a conditional letter of acceptance until you do graduate and provide final transcripts from high school. If you are over 19, your transcript is not required. And um, just to answer Brianna down there, um, you do not need a letter of approval from your parents. Um, yeah, you do not need a letter of approval. How it works is that we will make a student contract for you after you are admitted into the school and they will have to sign it if you are under 19, but they don't have yeah. to write a letter. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you who are applying to the program, but if you're under 19, then your parents sign the contract, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay, let's see. Oh, Brianna had another question too about references. Mm, okay. Well, as long as you let your instructors know that you're going to add them as a reference and they are okay with it, you should be able to add that to your resume. Mm -hmm. uh, I would speak to them first, definitely, and ask for their permission to add their names to yeah. your resume. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But I don't think references are required. It's kind of a nice Usually thing. Not. It's, it's nice to yeah. have, but not 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 required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Can we access the computer labs equipment at night? Yes, that is the way that we've always generally operated. Um, mm -hmm. Classes are generally during the day, like you know nine to four, or some some programs might have a, an evening class. Uh, in which you might have a class from six to nine sometimes in some programs, not all programs. Um, 
but uh, you can you can access the computer. You generally will have your own personal workstation, uh, and you can come and go is from anywhere time from like seven in the morning till midnight. Um, and uh, we give out key cards, key card access, so you can come and go. Um, but we don't we don't give our students twenty four seven access. We do want you to go home by by midnight, so you can actually go home, get some sleep, and then mm -hmm. show up you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed the next day for your class. Because um, that's important that you have a some balance. Come to school, go home, come to school, go home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can work late into the night if you want and you have access to to the school. It's free reign over the school in the evenings for sure. And a lot of times you need it <laughs> to put in those extra hours. Yes, I'll, yeah, more yeah. often than not, you will have yeah. to be here after class. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, if a portfolio isn't needed to apply for web design, what is needed in an application? All right. Let me, I'll bring up the slide for that. All the admission requirements. Here we go. All right. So this is basically all the requirements for applications to all programs. Um, as you can see, the 12-piece portfolio uh, is needed for animation, game art, effects, or photography, not for web. Um, but everything else that you see here is, is required. So a letter of intent, a resume, a proof of age document, um, transcripts. Again, as you said, I think only if you're, if you're over 19. If, or you're, if, under, you're, if you're under 19, under, sorry. Yeah. 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 So, and then English English test results. If English is not your first language, then you'd have to submit those as well. Mm -hmm. But if your first language is English, however, we do need to see your transcript so that you can mm -hmm. prove you've learned in English before. Right. So I guess that means everybody needs to submit transcripts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. So that's basically for all across the board for all programs. Those are the basic admission mm -hmm. requirements. And I'll put some links in the chat when we before we wrap up, so you can have easy access to those. Uh, okay, where are we here? Let's see. Maria. Uh, resources such as computer. Oh, that's a good question. So, um, Mariel, which program are you asking about specifically? Because that the answer to that question may differ a little bit depending mm -hmm. on the program. So maybe let us know which program in the chat. And then we'll come back to that question. Um, do you need to be good at math to do well in web design? No, I don't think so. I mean, no. basic math skills are definitely going to be useful for things like coding. But as we said, you don't really need any coding experience coming into the program. Mm -hmm. So for web design, especially, I don't think you would need, I don't think designers use math as much as coders do. Coders might use math a little bit, but I don't know. I'm not a coder, so I'm an yeah. I don't use math at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except for timing. As, as long as you understand timing for animation, you know, like that there's 24 frames a second, that's about... All the math. That's I mean. all the math. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the most important math that an animator needs to know is, is frames per second, and that's, that's about it. Um, so let's see. So Marielle, if you're still out there, if you want to type in, let us know. Short answer to that is like generally for all programs is that um, if it's animation, game art, or visual effects, you're given a personal workstation that you will have in the school. Uh, web as well, right? Web and web can... too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Web uh, actors don't really have any a whole lot of supplies. Oh, here we go. Game art and design. Okay, so yeah, you would basically you'll have you'll be given a personal workstation which you can use in the classroom in the lab. Um, so you don't need your own computer. Um, we do recommend, and you don't actually need a tablet. Um, if you have one, you can um, you can bring one in. There's life drawing classes, so you will need mm -hmm. to have some life drawing supplies. There is a supply list on the website for every mm -hmm. program as well, um, but it's not anything really extensive. Uh, the, the main the other main thing that you do want to have in game art and design is a hard drive to back up mm -hmm. all of your work. Yes. So yeah, things like that. So we will provide all of the software as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you'll mm -hmm. have license. Uh, li the, the software will be on your computer in the classroom. Exactly. Yeah. And if you take the program online, we'll give you a VPN like mm -hmm. access through our server so that you can download the software and have it on your your computer at home. If you're online, you're going to want to have your own computer that's that's powerful enough to run the software. But we have those specs, the tech specs too, which mm -hmm. we can always email to you if you need it. But if you're coming into class in person, then you don't have to worry about that because you're just coming into the classroom and using the using the labs here. Yes. OK. What do you love most about Van Arts that you think other colleges, universities may not offer? Oh, I like this question. Yeah, and just in general. in general. Community. Yeah, for sure. Mentorship. Mentorship. Um, mm -hmm. I think to the, the the really specific focus that our programs have, particularly when it comes to visual effects, game art, and animation, a lot of schools kind of take elements of those different parts of production, mm -hmm. and they'll kind of mush it together into one program mm -hmm. where you learn a little bit of effects, a little bit of modeling, a little bit of animation. But at Van Arts, those programs are separated for a reason, because studios mm -hmm. want to hire specialists. They want to hire the best effects artists, the best modelers, and the best animators. So the way our programs are structured, I think, from the bat is different from other schools. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of students that graduate from other schools and then struggle to find jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why they join our programs, so that they can fully focus on a skill, and then they can find jobs afterwards in the industry. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're closely connected to the studios. Um, mm -hmm. Like we said, as long as you you know do the work, it is like a family environment. You know, everybody. Um, yeah, that community is great. Uh, it's great. You know, the students make make friends really quickly. It becomes mm -hmm. like your second family. Yeah, absolutely. Class. You're gonna see yeah. them for twelve months straight in your classroom every day. Yeah. <laughs> so. And in a lot of cases, the rest mm -hmm. of your life too. You know, I mean, like the uh, mm -hmm. we see we see classes where you know like a good you know chunk of the class will get all get hired by the same studio. Uh -huh. Aha. Only recent that happened so recently. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Maybe about like four intakes ago. A lot of people in that class got hired by the same studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had that. That mainframe has mm -hmm. been hiring lots of grads uh -huh. from different classes. So even though class, and because we have classes that overlap, um, you know, we have, we bring in new students every six months, eh? So like in March and September, there's new groups coming in and old groups graduating. So there's always a group. When you come in, there's always a class that's six months ahead of you. And they're basically like your seniors and you're the junior class. And then when you go into term three, you uh -huh. become the seniors and the new class becomes the juniors. So the juniors and seniors classes that overlap, they also get to know each other. And mm -hmm. so the nice thing about that is that when you come in, when you reach the halfway point, your senior group ahead of you is going to graduate. And so for the last six months of your studies, they're all going to be look, getting jobs. Mm -hmm. So you stay in touch with your seniors and keep those WhatsApp chats going and, you know, find out what everybody's doing and stay uh -huh. in touch because one of your seniors could potentially recommend you to come work for them when you're done. So, and that's happened a lot. It happens mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's how grads get jobs. It's uh -huh. through their buddies. <laughs> and through the instructors. The instructors, mm -hmm. their demo reels, everything. It's, mm -hmm. it's everything. A yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a whole process. It's uh -huh. multifaceted. Yes. So, yeah. That's great. Okay, uh, class structure for animation and any short breaks between terms. Yeah. Yeah. So how it works is it is 12 months, as we said, and there are four terms and every term is three months long. Um, that's how it's structured and the schedule is made for you. You cannot choose the classes that you take. Um, right. So everybody takes the same classes at the same time. Um, and you do get a winter break or a Christmas or holiday break uh, in December of about a week, I believe, or 10 days or so. Yeah, days. well, the, 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 the break is like halfway between terms two and three. So for the, for the March intake, it lands in the summer. Uh -huh. And then for the September group, it would, it's actually next week. It lands it's in actually the next week. Yeah. yeah. Other than the holiday breaks. The holiday break, everybody's gone for uh -huh. two weeks. For yeah. two, two weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, the That's break Christmas is actually time. this, uh -huh, the, yeah. and then between terms two and three, there's another break. So you get right. two breaks and then all, all stat holidays. 
Right. Yeah, we have we we like our stat holidays in Canada. Yeah. So a few, a few holidays here and there. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, but like we said, it's a twelve month. Um, eat, sleep, and breathe Van Arts for twelve months. Yeah. Not a lot of breaks, but when the breaks come, they're very welcome because yes. you do need to recharge your batteries every now yeah. and again. So that's always good. Um, all right. So scholarships. Yes, Alex, there are scholarships and they are based on merit. So this means that um, once you submit all of your required materials, the admissions team will go over them and send them a later to the to the department, say if it's animation, VFX, etc., for assessment. So, based on the high quality of your portfolio and your letter, your resume, etc., an amount of money will be assigned to you and then deducted from the total cost of tuition. And these scholarships range from about seven hundred and fifty Canadian dollars to about three thousand dollars, depending on the program. Uh, it can be more, it can be less. It really also depends on your own uh, financial situation. So, we try to be as considerate as possible. We do not offer. Four Full scholarships, um, but we do our best to help as many students as we can, other than giving full scholarships to very few students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're essentially merit based. So yeah, mention it in your application. Mention it. Really good portfolio. And, yes, and also your advisor. The advisors are here to help you as well. So as you put together your portfolio, feel free to submit your progress for feedback, ask questions, um, ask for our opinion, speak to an instructor. That's all available. Uh, there's a portfolio review if you need it. So there's definitely the chance to improve your portfolio and aim for a higher scholarship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. All right. Are there outdoor classes in photography? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Or are they all done indoor? They're they're basically done both, right? Every, everything everything uh -huh. mentioned there. Yeah, yeah. Classes yeah. in the photography program are either in the the computer lab, mm -hmm. in the studio, or out on location. Mm -hmm. So uh, the outdoor classes tend to fluctuate depending on the time of year when the weather is better. But that being said, um, they do go down to the beach. They go down to Stanley Park. They uh -huh. go to sporting events. They go to the Britannia Mines, uh -huh. which I guess is indoor outdoor. Um, uh -huh. But yeah. Well, yeah, um, the really cool thing about the photography program is that it's also business focused. Yeah. So it will teach you um, all the photography that can help you grow a business afterwards. So it will be mm -hmm. focused on family photography, weddings, uh, sports events, etc. So as part of it, we will be taking you to all those kinds of events for you to take pictures. Also, the acting department will be collaborating with you a lot uh, for you to take pictures of the acting students, of, like say weddings, etc., etc. So yeah, that's definitely that's definitely the great thing about this program that it gives you all the skills you need to start your business after you graduate. Yeah. So you absolutely. need the experience within the twelve months. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right. Cool. All right. This is a really good question. Can I get mm -hmm. into the animation industry after graduating from game art and design? The short answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, the it kind of depends on what sort of role you want to have mm -hmm. in yeah. the studio because the game art and design program focuses mainly on 3d modeling concept art and um, game development mm -hmm. so if you want to be an animator you'd want to be in the animation program but if you want to um, if you want a job in the animation industry doing focusing more on modeling uh, concept art um, mm -hmm. then, then the game art and design is going to be a better, a better training, training for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of depends on what, what, what getting into the animation industry means for you. Yes. And also a really cool thing about the game art and design program is that um, we have a group project on term three that is really important. Um, you and your classmates are going to be mm, developing a video game. And so yeah. each one of you will have um an important role in creating this video game. So someone's going to be the producer, someone's going to be the art director, someone's going to be yeah. the rigging artist, the lighting artist, et cetera, et cetera. So you do get to explore the options of working at a studio uh, and that will help you also determine what you would like to do after you graduate and um, also how to be a team player, uh, mm -hmm. how to work with others, et cetera. All of those things are really important and it does help to recreate the studio environment and mm -hmm. so that you can choose what you want to do after. Yeah, 
-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's another. That's a good point. That's another way that the game art program differs from mm -hmm. the animation program because there's mm -hmm. not a lot of group projects in animation, but in game mm -hmm. art there is. Uh, a lot of animation in game studios is is done with motion capture, mm -hmm. um, whereas yes. animation for films and TV is usually, you know, frame by frame, frame keyframes. by frame, yeah, yeah, by by an animator. So uh, that being said, we do have a motion capture suit in house. We also it's so have cool. a, a facial yeah. a facial rig, a motion motion capture face rig too, and our students have used those. Uh, sometimes we might hire an actor who wants to put on the suit. Uh -huh. and bounce around it's so cool they get to be in the yeah. game so that's always fun yeah <laughs> um all right so a showcase for grads to meet industry folks or other ways to meet potential employers we do um we're hoping to do more of that when the pandemic kind of slows down uh pre-covid we did a lot more of that where we actually would hold like an industry night and we would actually uh -huh. invite studio reps to actually come in and we'd have a mixer and um, and let them sort of uh, share. You know, we would send demo reels to studios ahead of time so that recruiters have a chance to see who's, who the graduates are and then they can actually come in and meet them and then like, you know, arrange for interviews on the spot. Um, we haven't really been able to do that during the pandemic because of just restrictions for actually holding mixers and gatherings and, and, and things of that nature. But we have still been uh, sending demo reels to studios and we have still been inviting studios to give presentations uh, to students in the class. Um, there are still animation festivals and computer animation and computer graphics festivals that happen. Again, a lot of those have been virtual. But even in a virtual environment, you can still network mm -hmm. and you can still meet people. Um, studios Absolutely. are still hiring and they're still meeting with people. They use LinkedIn a lot. They use, you know, now they might do interviews over Zoom probably more than they mm -hmm. used to just for for safety and, and protocol reasons, right? And even a lot of the studios are working remotely as well. So I think that the way that studios operate in terms of how they interact with people has changed but what hasn't changed is the level of that we keep connected with the studios so mm -hmm. yeah and also for acting uh most of the auditions are now um virtual so yeah self-tape yeah it's self-taping so we will teach you those skills as well and uh you have just as much chance of landing a role if you do it mm -hmm. online or if you do it um in person so yeah, yeah for sure all right um our vaccination cards proof of vaccination required know that it's not um it's, it's not, not required. a law yeah it's, no it's not we don't we don't require uh, mm -hmm. for for schools um and educational institutions it's not it's not required i think it's might be still required for like bars and movie theaters and stuff like that uh -huh. but but yeah no we don't we don't require that um we still have a mask mandate around mm -hmm. campus so we still are encouraging students to wear masks in class mm -hmm. uh and we do encourage you and expect that you will get vaccinated but we don't we don't uh require we won't proof. ask for proof we won't ask mm -hmm. for proof no um how much do courses cost so the tuition for every program is um i'll put a link in the chat to our programs page so if you go to vanarts.com programs and you can click on the program that you want to apply to um, and if you scroll down a bit on the page, the tuition will be listed right there. It's not mm -hmm. hidden. No, it's really big, actually. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's how much? Yeah. So depending on which program, Alex, you're talking about, um, the mm -hmm. tuition will differ a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But all that information is there on the website in terms of each how much each program costs. And then Alex's other question, this is a unique school or are there different sort of branches? No, we are a unique uh, private school in Vancouver. We just have one campus mm -hmm. and we don't have branches or um, other other branches in other other parts of BC or in other parts of Canada. It's just, just us. Mm -hmm. Yep. One place. Yep. Yep. So 
maybe one day we'll have a van arts in every corner, uh -huh. but we're not, yes. we're not quite there yet. <laughs> we're not, we're not Starbucks yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the characters? Oh, I like this question. What are the Me character too. traits of a student who would do really well? Ooh, the, I know the fact I've, that you're asking uh -huh. that question is a good sign. Yeah, and I know I've said this like five times throughout this webinar, but yeah. passion and commitment, oh, that yeah. is passion and commitment. Mm -hmm. um, passion only will not get you that far if you're not really committed to what you're doing, if you don't show up to class, if you don't turn in mm -hmm. assignments, if you are late every day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to really commit to this. It's a big decision as well. Um, it's also your money, your hard earned money that you're putting into schooling. You want to make the really absolute best of it. So yeah, passion and commitment for me. What do you think? Ken? Uh, I agree totally. Mm -hmm. um, I would say also uh, ability to accept criticism mm -hmm. because totally. the industry is one where, you know, basically you have to kind of have a thick skin because you're going to be working on a team with other people. Uh, particularly in some of the industries we train for um, with photography, but even with photography, mm -hmm. you know, you still have to know, have really good people skills for photography because you're going to be dealing with clients that are basically hiring you to work for them. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, it's, you have to be able to, you know, understand that if people are telling you that your work needs to be better, it's because they want you to be better. Um, mm -hmm. You need to be a team player. You need to be able to work well mm -hmm. with other people. Uh, be really, you know, just know how to act professional because mm -hmm. we're preparing you for a professional industry. We're preparing mm -hmm. you to hit the ground running um, and get out there. Yeah. First day of school. Here's first day of school, you guys. It's a lot of work, but it really does pay off at the end of the year. Yep. Yeah. It pays off professionally for you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because people, you'll 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 get you'll get more mm -hmm. gigs and projects and studio, mm -hmm. uh, you know, studio positions and and jobs if people will recommend you highly. That carries a lot of weight. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, the as international students, can we apply for a scholarship to study remotely? Uh, so we talked about scholarships a bit already. Um, Studying remotely depends on the program. Like mm -hmm. we also said, there's only three programs that can be taken remotely for the whole year. Yes. Uh, and that's game art, web design, or visual effects. So um, it's kind of a two-pronged question. Um, scholarships are available for all students, mm -hmm. but there wouldn't be a scholarship to only study remotely. Uh, okay. Studying remotely is only an option if, if it's a program that we offer remotely. We mm -hmm. don't offer all programs remotely. So, wait, ah, okay, cool. Another another question came in. We're sort of coming up in about an hour, so we will sort of start wrapping up here soon, but we can take one or two more questions. So if you have a question that you want to throw at us, this would be the time to get one or two more questions in. So while you're doing that, here's our, our Pink Floyd fan, Alex is asking again, do you provide any work practicum experience or job site opportunities? That's a really good question. Um, again, it depends on the studio. Some studio, the, the program itself is so intense, there's really no time for a practicum or a work experience or an internship mm -hmm. that kind of overlaps with the program. We have had students, we have had instances where a studio might hire a student like a few weeks before they finish the program. And mm -hmm. so as they're wrapping up their final term, they might already have a job. That they're kind of starting to kind of ease their way in. That does happen occasionally. Um, but as far as a formal work practicum, there's really nothing formal that's that's set up. Um, it depends on the studio. We do recommend that you know you seek out work and maybe doing some freelance work here and there mm -hmm. while you're in the program if you can, if you have time. But we, we get this question about part-time jobs as well. Like, mm -hmm. can I work a part-time job while, while I'm studying? The short answer is yes, you can, but you have to manage your time really well because this mm -hmm. program is not something that you just sort of flounder around with. It's it's basically eating, sleeping, and breathing van arts. And mm -hmm. so you're, you, you want to manage your time. 
I'd say yeah. pretty well. Yeah, but some some people do it. Some students do it. So yeah, yeah. As long yeah. as you can manage your time and keep up with schoolwork and showing yeah. up and everything, you're good. Yeah, yeah. And some sometimes people ask about internships too. Um, some some studios offer internships. It depends on the studio. I know Sony Imageworks has an internship. Uh, MPC and Technicolor in Montreal have sort of like a training sort of like a, a, a boot camp kind of an internship that they use to kind of train new employees before they bring them on full time. But not all studios work that way. Other studios, they just basically say, you know, I want to see your demo reel. Oh, your demo reel looks good. Great. Can you come in for an interview? Uh -huh. Interview went well. Awesome. You're hired. You start on Monday. That's how uh -huh. it works. <laughs> so yeah. that, you know, job site opportunities. <laughs> yeah. You know, it kind of depends on the industry that you're in because they all work differently. But Getting our students job or our students getting jobs is what we're all about. That's what we want to see. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. What a great crowd. Yeah. Good questions. Really, really good. Yeah, and different from other times. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Cool, cool. So if there are no more questions, let me throw a few links into the chat and I'll put our email addresses in mm -hmm. too. So if you want to follow up with us later, um, this link will take you directly to our online application form. So if you want to start your application right away, uh, you can basically go there right now and you can get your application started as long as if you know which program you want and you know which start date you want, that is the first step <clears throat> to applying for the program. Um, and then if you have any questions that come up, I'm going to put Amelia, your email in first. Sure, thanks. Right. Yeah, so that is my email address and feel free to email me about any questions regarding admissions or about the programs or if you're not too sure what program to apply to, uh, the admissions team is here to guide you through all of that. typing. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so for admissions, uh, Amelia, and then if you want to email me about any questions, I be, I generally look after, you know, not only hosting uh, webinars like this, but I also work with student services. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, like when you apply to Van Arts, um, you will get your acceptance letter from you know, Amelia will send you your acceptance letter or another advisor, depending on the mm -hmm. program, will send you your acceptance letter. And then once you pay your tuition deposit, you'll get an email from me saying, hi, I'm Ken from Student Services. Here's a whole bunch of other links related to housing, medical insurance, mm -hmm. uh, study permits, um, orientation, uh, you know, pathways, things like that. If you have any questions about the pathways, you would you can also email me about that as well, because I'm the sort of gatekeeper for pathway questions mm -hmm. as well. But anything related to moving to Vancouver, housing, any kind of sort of things beyond actually applying to the program, um, then you can always reach out to me as well, and I can help you with any kind of thing related to that. All right. Woohoo! Cheers. Yay. Awesome. OK, you guys have been a great crowd. Really good questions. And thanks for joining us. Uh, hope this has been useful. Mm -hmm. And uh, just feel free to reach out to us uh, anytime. And we'll see you at Van Arts. Yeah. Bye, you guys. All Thank right. you. Have a good night. Thanks.